Hello everyone, we are very excited to be here today to share with you the release of the new ink color software for Rodland and Union, IMS 3.0. And IMS 3.0 is a cloud-based solution for managing color in the textile screen printing industry. It allows you to create, standardize, customize, and save your own colors. It also supports communication agility of formulas across your organization. And we're going to see a little bit more how this is done in a, in a little bit. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a great software. Another addition is that it allows you to see color chips images. So it can help you with the visual communication as well. Um, one question we have gotten is what happens to our current software, our GCC? So we want to tell everyone, our GCC will continue to be available for all of our customers through the end of the year. However, if you request a color match, this would only be updated on IMS going forward. Okay, but you will still have access to whatever formulas you had in RGSG, uh, RGCC in the past. Um, and today, our IMS expert has kindly agreed to be here with us and um, during our session, Tom is going to be navigating through the software and showing us how it has great functionalities and it's very easy to use. So, Tom, thank you so much for being here and agreeing to be uh, part of the Facebook Live. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to introduce this new software. So, um, awesome. we have a PowerPoint presentation just to kind of go over a couple different, the, we'll start with, there's a few different ways to actually um, download the software. So um, let's start with the um, the easiest way to get to the software. Um, we'll click um, to the next screen. And so um, there's, like I said, there's a few different ways. We can go directly into the uh, color system software or we can type in uh, uh, P1 IMS3, that's P1 IMS3. And you can see it takes you to, the first thing that pops up is, um, P1 IMS, IMS3 Azure software, and you click on that click on that link, and it takes you right to the login. Um, the other ways, um, Carlo will explain on the on the next one. So the other way, guys, is you can always get into the Broadland Inc. webpage as well as the Union Inc. webpage, and on the home page, you will see a section on the bottom right, which is called now IMS. 3.0 ink management software. There is a, a link right in here that says learn more. And if you click on that one, it's going to take you to the whole uh, web page that we have now designed for IMS. This is how the Rodland uh, homepage looks now. Um, and, and as you can see, the section that I'm talking about is on the bottom right. For the Union Inc., same thing. We have IMS section on the bottom right. And this is what you will guys see if you click on that link, on that link that says learn more. So we have different links here. One is to have access to the actual software, as uh, Tom just mentioned. The other one is a link to the different resources we have available for you to learn how to use this system. Uh, the first one is a quick start guide. The second one is the frequent asked questions. And the third is the user manual, which is the more comprehensive um, instructions for you to navigate the system. All right. So um, once you've decided which way you go, you can go through directly through the union um, uh, website or the Rutland website or the, um, the P1 IMS link on Google. But once you've done that, it's going to bring you to this screen once you've clicked on that. Once you get get to this screen. If you have the software, just simply fill in the email address and password, and it's going to take you directly into the software. If not, where you see the uh, red arrow, it, you click on that, um, and that's a hyperlink. It'll take you to this screen. And so in this screen, we need to know just some basic information, but we need to know, obviously, your name, your last name, company name, phone number, you know what country you're in. We're a global um, uh, provider of ink, so we need to know what country you're in. Uh, the distributor and this is most important because um, we have many different distributors with many different ink lines so we want to make sure that we give you access to the software that you need um, and then uh, you know something simple is just your email and, and password yeah and so once you've filled all that out you're going to get to this next screen and somewhere in the body of the letter you're going to have this this was one that i filled out so it's my name avian your phone number 
your email address, and then the link on the bottom. Once you click on that link, it'll take you to this next screen. And um, it's simply just click on the download. And what it'll do is it'll download the software. It takes a few, uh, few minutes. And um, the next screen will show you, it's gonna drop this um, IMS3 um, icon on your desktop. Once you click on this IMS3 icon, you'll see this next screen. And you can um, choose which color system that you want it to default to. So in this case, we're gonna be showing the Rutland system. You just simply click on that Rutland um, little box and then click on launch and then the next screen will pop up and uh, the software. So we're, we're going to get into the software in a second, but just in case you have any issues or any problems, you can, here's the direct link, which is the um, the P1 IMS direct link. And then we have Mariel Alvarez, who's um, kind of our inside uh, support staff that, that's really uh, fluent in this software plus her cell phone number. So now that we've downloaded the software, um, we're gonna go through the software itself. So this is the software and we are in the blending screen, which you can see right here. Um, on the top here in the right is your, um, you can select color system. So in this case right now we're in the C3 system, but if you if you wanted to use the M3 system, you just click on this and it'll take you <clears throat> to the formulas in the M3 system. Um, the next thing over here is um, if you wanted to change users, if you have multiple users, you just click on this. If you wanted to know which version of the software you're running, um, simply click on this. If you needed to reload is the next one, or if you wanted to go directly to the web, it's right here. The center area is um, all the tabs, which are the functions of the software, which we'll go through in a little bit, each one individually. Um, on this left side, um, you can see here this button clicked is the standard formulas. And the standard formulas are all your Pantone numbers, and these cannot be changed. So if you wanted to uh, have Pantone 123 up here, if we wanted to change Pantone 123, what we could do is we could clone it and then we would change it and it would be found under the user formulas, which would be right here. Um, underneath this, you have uh, one, two, and three. And the first one is your, your active filter. So in this case, we're running the C3 system, which is a balanced pigment system. So basically, you're able to select a base. So we simply select a base and you can select the O base or you have the matte base, endurance base, poly base, just depending on which one you want to make, you can select it. Um, and then um, the number two would be what, what uh, formula you're looking for. So in this case, it's Pantone 123. It's the HO, the high opaque version. And then number three would be um, how much you want to make. And then there's also this drop down over here, depending on what country you're in, there's different things you can select, US gallons or liters or anything like that. And this, today we're going to work in grams. Um, this area over here where you see the Pantone chips, this is your main formula area. And um, below that is actually your formula. So we have the grams and the percentage of coverage. So what we're going to do now is first thing we're going to look at is we're going to create a new formula. So to, to create a new formula would be a formula completely from scratch. So we're going to click on that right now. We're going to type in test. Um, you know, you can call it whatever you want. In this case, we're going to call it test. And then the, um, we're also under description, you could type in it could be a job number. It could be a company color like Coca-Cola Red or whatever you want to make. In this case, we'll just put test again. And then um, you can select a color um, if you want, if you already know what the color is, or you can go back later and change it. Um, and that'll be on your Pantone chip. And then you, you need to select a base type. In this case, we're going to select the VO base. Um, and then there's references. The person that made it, the time you made it, it's up to you. It just areas you can put something in. And so then we just hit this green button to go. And once we do that, it's going to start with a thousand grams of the VO base. And then we click here, and this is where you select the components. So in this case, we got a drop down bar. And so we're going to select the, let's see, um, how about the, um, the lemon yellow? So we're going to select the fluorescent lemon yellow, click over here, grams. We're going to put 50 grams of that in, hit enter. You're going to drop it down again. We're going to put another component in there. And let's say in this case, we're going to pick the blue. We got blue number two. We're going to put, you know, say, 20 grams of that in. And so we're going to make kind of a greenish, kind of bright blue or green, whatever. So um, then once we, if this is the color we want, we mix it, see if it's the color we want, and we save the change, which is up here, save your change. And so that's going to save it. And you can see over here, like we talked about before, this would be your user formula. So it's under user formula. It's called test, okay? And um, if you wanted to um, make 
make it. Here's your formula here. You can just change how much you want to make. So if we wanted to make, you know, whatever a gallon, we put a thousand grams, or you want to just make a quart and say a thousand grams. And a thousand grams is a quart with room to stir, basically. So that's why we use a thousand grams. So that's how you make a new formula. Just a um, so now clone formula is probably the one we do more often. So we go under our standard formulas, uh, click that, take us to our standard formulas, and you pick the color that you that's closest. So in this case, we're going to work with Pantone 123. Um, so Pantone 123, the customer likes it, but they want it to be a little less kind of red and a little less yellow. So what we'll do is we'll clone the formula. Click over here. You clone it, and it's going to call. It's going to be called Pantone uh, Pantone 123 clone. And then down here in descriptions, you can do a test. You can you can call it whatever you want. In this case, we're just still going to call it a clone. We'll call it clone one. How's that? And then we're going to save it. And then we're going to make some adjustments to this formula. So we know it's pretty good, but we're it's a little bit. We want to back the yellow off a little bit. So we'll make 50 grams of that. And the red is a little too red, so we're going to do two grams instead of nine grams. So let's do two grams. That's twenty grams. Uh, let's do two grams of that. And so we've made it. You know, we've made it. This is the formula. It looks good. And now we once again we save it. And then, as you can see, it's under user formula again. Um, here's the description: clone number one, and we're going to make a thousand grams. Uh, we'll save that. And so here's your formula for a thousand grams. So now that we've done this, um, let's say I want to print this out. So there's a couple options for printing. So there's the one here under the just standard print formula. So this is just going to print um, just basically on a, on a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And it's just going to have this information on it for your formula. Now you can connect this to your job ticket or whatever, and it would be the formula. The other way to print is the one that most people do is print to label. So you just click on this label one and you can see the drop down. And this is exactly what the label will look like. So it's going to have the description of the color, color system that's it, it that's it, it's in. Plus it's going to have the formula, formula right here. And when you made it. Now you can change all this if you want. If you just want to just have the name of the formula, you didn't want the date, you can you can change it just up to you however you want it. Up here, you'd select your printer. Um, what we recommend is a zebra printer for this. Most people have zebra printers in their shop. It's the one you use for UPS labels, and it's the perfect size um, for this. And you print this out, you put it on your side of the court, put some clear tape over the top of it. Next time, instead of pulling the formula up, it's right on the side of the bucket and, and you can mix it. So that's what we would recommend. Um, so the next thing. Um, I work in Southern California. I have a lot of people with shops on this side of the border and in, in Baja. And so um, we have this custom and we need to send this to our shop or to, our, to somebody that's subcontracting it out. So we just click on this button. I want to email it. And we use Outlook, but depending on what, what software you use for your email, it would pop up here. Click this button and it's going to go create a an email and all you have to do is type in the person that you're going to send it to I'm going to type in Ray Smith and boom I'm going to send him the formula so he's ready to go so that's the way we kind of create a formula and print a formula and we can send a formula talk about calculating a formula so you have a big job let's go back to standard formula standard Pantone formulas um, and let's still stick with 123 this is what we've kind of been doing um, and we can do a drop down here. So click, click calculate. A couple different ways to do this. The one we're going to work with first is this print area. And so what you do is I'm going to print 10,000 prints. And it is a 10, 10, which is 100 square inches. Now, if you have RIP software um, for your direct screen or your film output device, whatever, the um, the black space on your film positive or the ink that goes down on your screen, um, it can tell you how many square inches that's putting down and you could just type that directly on here and that would be more accurate. If not, you can just pick kind of the square inch area and you can figure out what the percentage coverage is. In this case, I'm just gonna say it was a square 
the 10 by 10 square, 100% coverage. Um, and then what we do here is you pick what mesh count you want to go through. So let's pick um, a 330. And down here, what you the batch is 14.6 um, kilograms. But let's say we wanted to run it through a 110. And you can see how much bigger it is, you're going to make basically almost almost 50 kilograms to make it through 110. So it's nice that you can see the different mesh counts you go through. And it also thread diameter, some threads thicker or thinner. So we, we put that into the calculation as well. There's other ways to get it. So you have the weight per gram. This is probably the most accurate, but it's probably not the one people use unless they really need to get pricing down. And so what you do is you weigh a piece of fabric um, and then you print the ink on the fabric. And before you send it through the dryer when it's still wet, then you weigh it on the fabric again and you subtract the amount of ink from the fabric and that's how much you'd put into the calculation. And it would tell you how much ink, you, ink you're gonna use on the job. And so, and then you have the inch uh, calculation as well. So that's how you um, do the calculation screen. And then the last thing is a blending screen. So we have, um, we have a couple different products out there, but the one that's used the most is um, a scale. So if you want like a semi-automatic machine, and so what you do is you connect the software to um, a Satori scale. And when she hit the blending screen, I don't have anything hooked up to it, so it's not gonna work, but um, it would take you to a dispense screen. And in that dispense screen, it would say, I need you know, 752 grams of of the mat base and once you put 752 grams of the mat base they'll make you go to the next color and once you put 140 grams of the white um then you can go to the next color if you have 110 grams it's not going to let you go to the next color until it's accurate or if you have too much it's not going to let you go to the other color and so that this way anybody can make a color match it's just uh it's, it's like a semi-automatic machine you have automatic machines as well um that run off the software so that's it on this uh blending screen the next screen would be the setting screen, which is pretty uh, kind of straightforward, but we'll go to the setting screen. So the general screen is the one you're gonna use the most. So if you are a Rutland user and you use our Zodiac water-based system and you wanna open up the Zodiac software, you'd simply click on Zodiac and you go to apply change and you click on that. Once, you're, once it clicks on that, it's gonna shut down the program. When you open the program back up again, it will open up in the Zodiac program. Um, in this case, we'll just still keep it in the Rutland. Um, the other options we have, because we're a, a global company, you have um, different languages that the software is written in. So you have English and, and German and French and Spanish or whatever. You just simply select which one you want. Um, this is kind of default by region to, um, in this case, we're in the US, which is fine English. But um, And then you have the default system. So in this case, um, I want to set the default system because I use the C3, so I just simply do that and, and save um, the change. Once you save it, it'll save the change. And then we go to user. So the user is just basically your information, uh, the company you know, that you filled out when you logged in, your password, you can reset your password. That's basically it. And then in the blending screen, you can default um, your base. So all you use, if you use VO base every single time when you search a formula, it's only going to search formulas with VO base, right? But if you only do puff, you can pick your puff base. So it's up to you which one, what you want to do. So I'm not going to pick anything there. So, um, and then you can default the amount that you always want it to um, give you a formula when you check it. So in this case, we have a thousand grams, which I, once again, I said it's like a quart with room to stir. Um, and the rest of this is just some, some user information. But in a nutshell, that's it. And this is um, the, um, the Avient um, IMS3 software. And if you have any questions, um, please contact your, your um, Avient distributor or Avient salesperson, and we can help you with anything you'd like. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Tom. Yeah, this was very, very useful and very well explained, um, very detailed. So we also have sometimes a question about um, what if the, uh, the customer or the user has a Mac instead of a PC? Yes. Yeah. So um, we can get if we can get back to uh, our PowerPoint, I can kind of talk about that. So um, on our PowerPoint, so um, most people that have, you know, most a lot of people have Macs at home. I mean, 
in in my house, my wife runs her business on a uh, on a PC, and when she she comes home, we have a Mac, and so um, she uses this this um, software called Parallels, and which is this first um, site here, and it's a subscription service. Um, you know, there's a, another one too. It's called VMware, but basically, you pay a monthly fee, and it's like seven bucks, basically. Um, and you log on to their server with your Mac and you basically have a virtual PC. So you can run all your PC programs and stuff like that on it. I, I also researched this and here's a link to an article that I read and Oracle has this virtual box and it's, there's a free download and also free, a free download for, for Windows 10. Um, so if you just click this link, it takes you to that article and it shows you how to download that. But, you know, these virtual PC uh, programs were developed um, for people that have Macs and there's a lot of gamers like my kids play a lot of games that are only on PCs, but they have Macs. So they, they use these virtual PC programs and our um, IMS3 software will run on it. So this is a, a good way to run it without having to buy a PC. Oh, that, that's a great tool. Yeah. That's really good. And, and guys, if, if you want more information on the links, I mean, you can find them here, but you can always uh, contact your account rep and they would also help you have this information. One last thing I would like to say before we go is um, if you guys are familiar with the functionalities of IMS with a different brand from Broadland and Union, and you know that there is an option on the menu that is not um, active and you need to use it, feel free to contact us and we can make that change for your user account so that you have all the functionalities available. Um, so just let us know. I mean, we're here and we, we're trying to make um softwares and tools available to you so this is better for the brand and at the same time better for the users uh and we are always welcome uh feedback and your input on how we can make things better for you as well yeah all right well thank you all very much yeah thank you have a great day and see you soon all right thank you